Now there has been a bit of controversy over who created the fly I'm going to tie for you today. Now it is a pretty old pattern, but it's not at all a forgotten fly. There are lots of references to it out there online, and it's in at least five of my books. It's in Stetzer's Best 1000, Dave Hughes' American Fly Tying Manual, and Federation of Fly Fishers' Pattern Encyclopedia. And one side note, it is tied different in at least four of the books that I looked at. Mostly it's with the wing. Sometimes it's a silver fox or red fox or even a gray squirrel, but also with the slight variations in the color of the body, and then even different feathers for the collar hackle. Now the history of it goes back to 1911 when a guy named Roy Angus Thompson came up with a series of hair wing salmon flies. And did you catch that name? Roy Angus Thompson, initials R-A-T. So his series of flies came to be called the rats. Now that makes sense to me and I'll buy that story, but there is another story out there that a guy named Joseph Closeth Arsenault was the first one to come up with these rats. Now there may be some truth to that, but if so, why did he call them the rats? I don't know. But Arsenal was a very well-known East Coast salmon fly tire back in the 1940s, and the story that he tells is that he tied up a bunch of black rats for Joseph Pulitzer, who did really well with them, and one of them did so well that it got really chewed up, and you could see the rust color thread that Arsenal used underneath it, and Pulitzer came back and said, hey, tie me up a bunch of these with this color scheme. So, you know, uh, Arsenault did, and then the, the new pattern was, you know, kind of a rusty orange color, and he named it the Rusty Rat. So this is what I'm thinking. Maybe Roy Angus Thompson really did come up with the original series called The Rats, but Clovis Arsenault altered it a little bit and came up with the one we call the Rusty Rat. But either way, it's been a pretty successful and popular fly since at least the 1940s. Now, one other point I want to make before you click off this video because you're not a salmon or steelhead fly fisherman, it's this. Lots of salmon and steelhead flies can be tied in lots of variations for all kinds of species. And I know I'll get some hate mail for saying this, but you could tie this thing smaller or on a streamer hook. And some purist out there might leave a snarky comment and say, well, you can't call this thing a rusty rat if you put it on a streamer hook. And I'll say, sure we can, I just did. If you think about it, the golden girl was originally a steelhead fly, and that's a really popular streamer now. And the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught was a 20 plus incher in Southwest Virginia. I caught it on a skycomish sunrise tied on a streamer hook. So my philosophy here, and new tires out there, you can take this or leave it, is that if you see a steelhead or a salmon fly that you like, tie it on whatever hook you want and chase whatever fish you want with it. And while I do respect the history and tradition of our sport, it's okay to change things up a little bit, experiment, play around with it, but most of all, just have fun. So there's one in the vise, a rusty rat. And what you're looking at is the first one I've ever tied. So let's tie this second one. Let's go ahead and pinch this barb. And that's a size six, it's a must add, I don't know what model number, that one right there, single salmon hook. And I'm gonna catch in some red thread. You see that little gap right there? I'm gonna try and fill that in with the gold rib here in just a second. I'm not going to worry about it yet. So let's go ahead and take this back to the point. And that's a decent base layer. So let's go back up here and then catch in our oval gold tinsel. So this is actually a French tinsel in size small. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to catch it in, let's see, right here so I can help minimize this little gap. It's not always easy to do, but you can sometimes. And I'm gonna put a few wraps up over this, you know, to help just really bind that bend in. Okay, so that's about where I'm gonna put my tag end. So a couple wraps right here, and now three wraps, big open wraps, just to get this out of the way. Now I'm going to uh, four or five wraps certainly if you're using a small, and just try to put them right next to each other to get this little tag. Now remember we had three wraps right here. We'll back those off and then catch this off. I think that's actually six wraps, but that's gonna be fine. 
Now the next thing I'm gonna catch in, some peacock sword fibers. Not hurl, but these things right here. Even about maybe five or so. And these things will kind of go all over the place on you, but that's okay. I think that looks pretty cool. So let's just catch these in right here. You know, not insignificant, not terribly long, but let's go with that, say, right there. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Now let's pull this rib out of our way. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of bury these, help build up a little bit of an underbody. But let's leave our thread about, you know, a, a third. Uh, the, the recipe says a, the back third is this orange floss we're about to put in, and then the front third is peacock curl. So where's that other third? I'm, I guess it's just the, the bare hook at the back. And the floss we'll want to use is an orange or rusty orange. And I didn't have a true floss. This is a uni. It's one ply, but it's a 600 denier. But I still want to, you know, it's not real thick, so I'm going to put it on in two layers. Or use two strands of it, I mean. So let's just catch this one in. I've got about 10 inches, maybe 8 or 9 inches, I guess, of this floss right here. So see what I'm doing here? I caught it in the middle, and now I'm... Uh, doubled it over. Now leave our thread oh, about where we want to stop this body. And what I'm going to do here, just wrap this up and, you know, treat it like any floss or thread. If you want to cord it up a little bit, give it a counterclockwise spin. And if you want to flatten it back out, uh, or counterclockwise spin to flatten it and clockwise to cord it. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. Let's catch this off. And I do want this coming off the back, so, you know, off the top. We leave this tag. Don't cut it just yet. But the thorax, now we use peacock curl. And take five or six strands. I snipped off the brittle ends right here. So let's just go ahead and catch this in. Maybe pull it back a little bit, okay. Okay, now just wrap this hurl up. All right, now kind of hold this out of the way for just a second. And let's wrap up our rib. But then we're, we're going to wrap it farther, in, you know, in front of this piece right here. And what I guess we could do here, let's just put one wrap right there to hold that out of the way temporarily. Okay, now just go ahead and wrap your rib up to the back of that hurl. Now we can take that up and don't let go of your rib just yet. And now finish wrapping this rib up through this hurl. Okay, now let's just try to cut this somewhere almost to the end of the tail, I think is gonna be fine. What they call this is an underwing. And I wouldn't worry if it's sticking up right now because you know the, the overwing will certainly push it down here in just a second. And our overwing is just a small to medium tuft of either red fox guard hairs or Silver Fox. And what you'll want to do here, take a look at that. That looks pretty good, but look at all that under fur. So grab it by the tips and then pull this under fur out. That's a lot of under fur we just pulled out of there. And you might need to do that a couple of times and then put it in your stacker. There we go. I think that's going to work right there. Let's stack this and see if it stacked okay. I think it did. And there, that's what we're going to put on for our wing. So I'm going to grab the, the tips. I am going to give my thread a, a counterclockwise spin to just kind of cord it up a little bit more. And let's lay this right on top and catch it in with a pinch wrap. Now snip this excess up here. And we'll take a few wraps right here to just give us a smoother underbody where we're going to wrap the hackle. Now one tip, that under fur you pulled out, I just save it. I put it in one of these little cups right here. This stuff makes some great dubbing. So don't throw that away if you're gonna be 
making any dubbing anytime soon. Now the collar hackle is gonna be a grizzly. If you have a grizzly soft hackle, that'd be fine. If not, just get one of the softer feathers from your dry fly cape and you know, one of the bigger, wider feathers from kind of underneath it. And I'm gonna catch it in from the fat side. I'm gonna leave that stem in, wrap it all the way up front. It might just help minimize a little, you know, step down right here. Now let's just wrap this. Try to preen these back and maybe four wraps. Uh, these are gonna be sticking out, but we'll, you know, we'll sweep them back with uh, a few thread wraps here in just a minute. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough. Kinda of going all over the place, but again, I think we can recover from that. And I'll just lick my fingers and then try to pull everything back right here and now build my head. Okay, I think those are swept back well enough. Let's go ahead and snip this excess and see if we have any cleanup. Well, we're gonna have a little bit of cleanup, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and finish the head first. You know what, maybe we're fine without any cleanup. I think we've got a fishable fly here, just a drop of head cement and this thing's ready to go. So that's it my friends, the rusty rat. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.